G'day, this is Gary007 and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to talk about gold making in World of Warcraft uh, before TBC gets released and some of this can carry over into TBC. So this is a very short guide, a very short video uh, surrounding this topic. So if you like this sort of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a like and a comment below. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. So the first one we're going to be talking about is selling kits and specifically we're going to look at the profession of tailoring now i could have chosen enchanting i could have chosen jewel crafting i could have chosen those professions however those professions require you to change your current profession so you would have to skill into that profession and level it up in order for you to benefit from however i'm choosing tailoring Pacific because everybody can do it cloth drops from everywhere so you're able to pick up cloth off mobs rather quickly linen cloth wool mage weave ruin cloth all of those are still going to be vitally important in TBC because people will be leveling up their characters and alts once they get to the phase one a lot of people are going to go back and they're going to be leveling their alts all the way through into TBC well content is on hold or you're on lockout in Kara so people will still level alts and people coming back into the game will want to level up their professions and tailoring is very powerful in TBC especially early on in the first couple of phases there's nothing that can beat some of the pieces that you make in tailoring so selling tailoring kits can make your fortune now you're probably wondering well how much can I make off a tailoring kit a one to three hundred tailoring kit well, I mean, it depends on the market, it depends on your server, so on and so forth. But these kits can go from 1.5 to 1.6k each, or even more, depending on what phase of content you're sitting in. Now, people might think, oh, that's pretty expensive, you know, I'm not going to, I'd rather go to the auction house. What you're selling with with selling these kits whether it's tailoring or enchanting or whatever it is you're selling convenience and you need to portray that to the customers that you're trying to sell it to you're selling convenience they can go to the auction house and might get it a little bit cheaper but they're going to have to fluff around uh, and wait for stock to come in and that's where your value when selling a kit to the player base comes into basically the other player doesn't have to worry about uh, getting on the auction house trying to get good pricing because pricing fluctuates you're there you got the kit and that's where you go into sales mode and try and sell the kit and just market it as convenience hey you don't you didn't have to go out there and and farm 90 bolts of wool 90 bolts of ruin cloth or 160 bolts of ruin cloth i've got that all here ready for you to go let's do a deal so yeah anyway and you don't even have to sell the whole kit you can sell partial kits as well so partial leveling so say leveling and tailoring so like 160 to 230 uh, leveling kit you can you can make that as a kit in your in itself and say well i'm going to sell mage weave cloth at this specific level I can sell uh, 90 bolts of this. I've got 90 bolts sitting in there and this is your leveling from 160 to 230 and advertise it like that in chat. So those are certain ways that you can go about it and everybody can do this because cloth drops off every single mob. So putting a kit together for tailoring is rather easy for everybody to do. Now, the next one I have on my list is a little bit different. So the one I'm thinking about is first aid. Now. First aid is a bit of a speculatory market idea on my behalf. So take this like a grain of salt. You got a 58 boost of characters coming into the game. What do they need to do? What do they need to do to get their character up to speed before going into TBC? And first aid is a big thing. Now we talked about tailoring and selling tailoring kits, but along that same vein, you'll be collecting cloth. So the next logical step would be putting a first aid kit together. A first aid kit is quite valuable for a fresh 58. So if you've got uh, 58 boosted characters that have been they're purchased, they're going to need first aid. And instead of going back into the old world and farming it, you could be there selling first aid kits and making coin off that. How much you'd sell them for would depend on the market as well and also auction prices and stuff like that and, and how much you value your time. So the next item I want to talk about is Large Brilliant Shards. Now, Large Brilliant Shards are still useful in TBC, believe it or not. Now, they come off 
level 60 dungeons, level 58, 60 dungeons. Um, come off level 55 blues, I think it is, that you'll get a large brilliant shard. Don't quote me on that. But that's where uh, you'll be doing a lot of disenchanting when you um, pick up blues out of those um, dungeons. So shards, uh, large brilliant shards, are still worth uh, quite a bit in TBC. Now, I'm just showing you here, they're worth about four or five gold, roughly, for one shard in classic servers. So on a naughty server, uh, TBC, they're going for around 15, 16 gold each. So the price difference, they do climb up in price in TBC. So it might be worth you, if you've got a bit of coin spare, uh, obviously if you've got around a thousand gold and you're saving that for the mount, don't go spending gold on large brilliant shards. Hold on to the gold that you have for your mount, put it away to one side. If you've got any spare coin, buy up a lot of these large brilliant shards because when TBC comes around, their price is going to jump up to about 15, 16 gold each. So you're going to make your money back on large brilliant shards. The next item we're going to look at on our list is Brilliant Wizard Oil. Now this is along the same vein as the Large Brilliant Shards because they're needed for Brilliant Wizard Oil of course as well. So this is what's feeding into Brilliant Wizard Oil pricing is because of the Shards. And the Brilliant Wizard Oil is still very important in TV still It still has value, it's still a very good um, enchant to put on your weapon to help clear content if you're struggling with dps so this is still a very good oil to put on your weapon and increase your dps and it's the prices are still around 14 15 gold on classic so they're very cheap right now so right now you could buy a lot of them stock up on them um, and wait for tbc to come out uh wait till 70 phase one maybe phase two whatever it is and then you could start throwing them on the auction house and you'll be making your money back. So what do they go for in, in a naughty TBC server? What do they go for on a private server? So at the moment, what they're going for on the server is they're going for about 49, 53 gold each. So they jump up in price dramatically. So you could stock up on these items, hold on to them until the price is right in TBC, and then start selling them. You will get your money back um, investing in Brilliant Wizard Oil and Large Brilliant Shards. They're, they're very safe bets, right? So you'll, you'll make money doing this when TBC comes around. But I have to put a disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> anyway, but... That, that's the safe bets that everybody can do stock up on cloth stock up on large brilliant shards stock up on brilliant wizard oil if the price is right and you'll make four times the gold that you would have invested in if you had originally bought it anyway so you'd make your investment back rather quickly in those just small little areas so anyway uh thank you for listening to a knucklehead like me don't forget to subscribe to my channel leave a thumbs up and a comment below about other gold making tips that everybody can get involved with but yeah all right thank you bye